Come on, Rock City, wherever you're at, in your living room, in a jail cell, in a nursing home, come on, let's worship the King. There's nothing like His presence. How many of us know His presence changes everything? And man, I'm so honored to be here with you guys today to, to see what God is doing in and through Rock City Church is truly incredible, not to mention all that is happening in the correctional facilities throughout the state of Ohio. Man, somebody say only God. Only God can do what he's doing around here. And I hope you never take it for granted uh, the privilege it is to be a part of this move of God in Columbus and beyond. And I'm excited to be here with you today. It's an honor for me to stand on this stage. Love your pastors. Pastor Chad and Pastor Katie, man, they're just the, they're the real deal. And not only are they incredible leaders, but they're amazing friends. And so just honored to be here. And we are in a series called Faith Forward. How, we can, how can we live a faith forward life in a fear-filled world? One of our kind of theme scriptures for this series is Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Let's take a look at it together. Paul's speaking here and he says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Paul makes this profound statement to pray about everything. And here, I want us to understand that Paul's words have some weight. You see, Paul's been through some situations where he didn't think he would be able to make it through. He's been imprisoned for his faith with being uncertain of ever even getting out of prison. He's, he's been stoned, a different kind of stoned. He's been, had rocks thrown at him and people left him for dead. Today we're gonna see that he was in a shipwreck and he was in a storm and he had these situations that he faced in his life where he didn't think that he would be able to make it through them. And he makes this profound statement and he's trying to teach the church of Philippi some lessons that he's learned in those moments. And the first thing he tells us is to pray about everything. That there's power in prayer. And then he goes on to say, tell God what you need. And then thank him for all that he has done. How many of us know that when we remind ourselves of all the things that God has already done in our past, it produces this faith in us that moves us forward into our future. Let me say it like this, that the God who did it before will do it again. The God who got me here, man, will get me there. Paul tells us, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. Thank him for all that he's done. Then you experience God's peace. That there's this exchange that happens when we bring our burdens, when we bring our struggles, when we bring our issues, when we bring our fear and we lay it at God's feet. In other words, as we lay it at God's feet, we're, we're giving him control. We're letting him have the responsibility of taking care of those issues. And in exchange, as we lay those things at God's feet, he gives us his peace. See, that's, that's really what this series is all about. That each week we're just talking about different things that we face that, that just bring fear into our hearts and into our lives. And we're making the decision, we're making the choice that I'm gonna have faith, that I'm gonna trust God in the midst of whatever it is that I'm facing in my life today. And today I wanna talk to us about having faith in the face of a storm, having faith in the face of danger. And the truth is we're either coming out of a storm, we're in the middle of a storm, or there's a storm waiting for us around the corner. Oh, pastor, can't you be more positive? Absolutely. I'm positive we're either coming out of a storm, we're in the middle of a storm, or there's a storm waiting for us around the corner. That's just the way life is. In fact, the Bible tells us that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. In other words, we all go through storms in our lives. And speaking of storms, I, I can remember several years ago 
when my wife and I were just newly married. We were living in South Dakota at the time. I'm originally from Kansas. My wife's from Missouri. And I'll never forget, we lived in this small town. I worked for a uh, Christian alcohol and drug rehab called Teen Challenge. And so we lived in Brookings, South Dakota. There was nothing in this town except for this rehab. And so if you wanted to, to go shopping, if you wanted to go out and get something to eat, you had to drive 45 minutes south down the interstate to the biggest city in South Dakota known as Sioux Falls. And so uh, one day we decided to have a little date day to go shopping, go out to eat. And so we went to the mall in Sioux Falls, ate at the Cheesecake Factory. Come on, somebody. And we shopped all day long. And it was about four or five in the evening when we got done. And we came out of the mall. And as soon as we walked out the doors, man, you could tell a storm had rolled in. The wind was blowing, dust was flying. And you could tell this wasn't any, just any old storm. And so we got on our phones and we quickly realized that we were in the middle of a tornado warning. So we decided to jump back in our car and drive the 45 minutes north back on the interstate back to Brookings, our hometown. And about five minutes into the drive, five minutes into the interstate, we look over in South Dakota, especially on the east side of the state, it was really flat, ton of farmland. And so you can see quite a bit in the distance. And we look over to our left and there's a tornado on the ground ripping up this field. Things are flying everywhere and it's headed straight for us. And I can remember being a little freaked out in that moment, a little intense. And, and we grew, even though we grew up in Kansas and Missouri, what is known as Tornado Alley, we'd been used to, to hearing a, a, about tornado sirens and seeing the damage. I've never seen one on the ground heading straight for me. And, and so I, I'm trying to think real quick on my, on my feet, if you will. What do I do? How do I respond? And so I just had the thought, man, I think we can outrun it. Come on, fellas, I think we can outrun this. I might be in a soccer mom van, but I think we can outrun this tornado. And so I tell my wife, I think we can beat it. I think we can outrun it. She's freaking out. And after I told her we could outrun it, she's freaking out even more. She's yelling things like, pull the car over. We gotta find shelter. We're all gonna die. I mean, she's losing it, especially after I told her we're gonna outrun it. And then the next thing she said to me was, uh, if you don't pull this car over, you won't have to worry about the tornado killing you. I'll do it myself. And in that moment, God gave me some wisdom and I pulled the car over. We found some shelter at a gas station. And as the tornado came across the interstate, it literally, as soon as it hit the interstate, it went back up into the sky. And of course we were okay, but I was just thinking about that, that moment, finding ourselves in the middle of a storm. And I had this thought that it's, it's one thing to talk about a storm, but it's a whole nother thing when you find yourself in the middle of one. Like it's one thing to hear about other people's storms, but when you find yourself in the middle of a storm, it changes things. And unfortunately, many of us, we might not be in an actual tornado today, but we're facing a, a storm of divorce, we're facing a storm of depression. We're facing a storm of discouragement. Maybe we're facing a storm of, of cancer, addiction. Maybe it's a financial storm. I, I don't know about you, but I feel these past few months, we've been in a storm as a nation. Just chaos happening all around us. And what I've noticed in my own life is that the, the longer we find ourselves in a storm, the more exhausted we tend to feel. I just wonder how many of us today are worn out by the storms in our lives. And if you're anything like me, I started asking the question, what do we do? What do we do when we find ourselves in the middle of a storm? Well, there's a powerful story in the Bible that I want to study with you today of some men who found themselves on this boat in the middle of a storm. It's 276 men to be exact and they're in the middle of this massive storm that went on for days, probably seemed like forever. In fact, the, the crew of the, the ship started freaking out. They were tossing things overboard, trying to make the ship lighter, trying to keep them from sinking. But in all reality, they all thought they were going to die. They all thought they weren't going to be able to make it through the storm they found themselves in. I wonder if any of us can relate to ever feeling like that. And so let's pick up the story. Acts chapter 27, verse 20 says this. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, 
and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. I wonder how many of us feel like that today. The storm just, just won't seem to stop. The wind won't stop blowing. The rain doesn't stop falling. And the Bible says that they gave up all hope of ever being saved. How many of us know the longer the, the storm continues to go on, the more hopeless we can tend to feel? Man, there's, there's no way our marriage is going to make it through this storm. There's no way that we're going to beat this, this medical situation. There, there's no way we're going to be able to overcome this addiction. There's just no way that we're going to be able to make it through this, this financial struggle that we're in. There's just no way that we're going to be able to make it through this. And as the storm continued, and it continued to pour, as it continued to rage, they gave up all hope of ever being saved. Today, as we kind of study this story together, I just want to give us three things to remember whenever we find ourselves in the middle of a storm so that we can have a faith that moves us forward. If you're taking notes today, the first thing that we need to remember is number one, is to never allow the presence of a storm cause you to doubt the presence of your God. Never allow the presence of a storm to cause you to doubt the presence of God. Isn't that what Paul was telling us in Philippians chapter four? Isn't that what he was saying to us? To, to pray about everything, to tell God what you need, but then to remember all the things that he's already brought you from. And I don't know about you, but I shouldn't be here today. I shouldn't be standing on this stage. There's been some storms that I've been through that I thought they were gonna take me out. I love to hear what's happening in the correctional facilities throughout the state of Ohio. Many of you might know my testimony, but I spent three and a half years incarcerated. Struggled with an addiction to alcohol and drugs. Some storms that I never thought that I would be able to make it through. But God, come on, but God got me through it. But God, I don't know about you, I shouldn't be where I'm at today. But God's faithfulness, but God's love, but God's grace in my life. And because of what he's done in my past, I'm never going to allow the presence of a storm cause me to doubt the presence of my God. Acts chapter 27, this is what Paul is saying in verse 22 and verse 23. He says this, but now I urge you to keep up your courage. To keep up your courage because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. I want to speak that to somebody today to keep your courage up. To keep your faith. This storm might be strong, but it's not going to take you out. This storm might be big, but it's not bigger than your God. He says last night in verse 23, an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me. You know that phrase in that passage of scripture to keep up your courage literally means that our strength or even us feeling weak is dependent upon what we put our faith in. Let me say it like this, that our faith isn't in what we see. Our faith is in what God said. Our faith isn't in the boat. Our faith isn't in the waves. Our faith isn't in the wind. Our faith is in the one who commands the wind, who commands the waves. God sends this angel to remind his kids they're not alone. To never let the presence of a storm cause us to doubt the presence of of our God. But, but notice in this story, God, God didn't take away the wind. The wind didn't stop blowing. The waves didn't stop crashing down. And yet in the midst of the storm, God reminded them that they're not alone. And as they realized this, their faith started to grow. As they realized this, they were able to keep their courage up, realizing they weren't alone in the storm. In other words, as God reminded them that he's with them, he's right beside them in the middle of the storm, it, it told them uh, this, that God necessarily is not going to take the storm away, but he will give us the strength, he will give us the courage, he will give us the faith to make it through it. You know, I, I mentioned earlier how I, I lived in, in South Dakota for 
for a few years. And one of the things I discovered about the state of South Dakota is that there's actually more cows than people uh, in this state. That's a true story. And not only are there more cows than people, but they also have a huge buffalo population as well. One of the world's largest buffalo herds in Custard State Park there in South Dakota. And, and I learned something about how uh, uh, there's a huge difference between how a cow and how a buffalo responds to a storm. You see, when a storm rolls up on, on some cows and when they see it coming off in the distance, they start running away from the storm. The only problem is they're not fast enough to outrun the storm. So eventually the storm catches up to them and, and when it does, they don't stop trying to outrun it. They just keep trying to run uh, away from the storm and what they end up doing is they prolong how long they've been in it. They make it longer how long they, they experience the wind, the rain, and they come out eventually as the storm passes, they come out more exhausted than they've ever been. But a buffalo, on the other hand, when they see a storm rolling in, they don't run from it, but instead they run through it. Now they still experience the wind, they, they still experience the rain. They still come out wet and tired on the other side, but they didn't spend nearly as long in the storm because they had the courage to run through it. I don't know about you today, but I want a faith. I want a faith that moves me forward. I want to have a courage not to run from the storm, but instead to run through it. In fact, that's the second thing I want us to remember whenever we find ourselves in the middle of a storm is number two is that God will give you the strength to run through a storm instead of run from it. You see, when we realize we're not alone in the storm, it changes our confidence. It changes our posture. It changes our perspective. It changes our mood. It builds our faith. It changes our thoughts. Man, it swings the momentum back into our favor when we're reminded we're not alone in the storm. How many of us know that it's a big deal who stands beside us in the middle of a storm? I can remember back in high school, I was a sophomore back in high school a few years ago, and for whatever reason, there was this, this senior who just had it out for me. He didn't like me. I don't know if it was my good looks or my incredible athletic ability, but for whatever reason, he had it in for me. He didn't like me, and he uh, was going to let me know that. And I'll never forget one time in particular uh, when we, uh, the high school in, in Kansas, uh, they built the biggest high school in the state that I attended, and so the, the lunchroom was huge. And I'll never forget one day for lunch, I went up to this table, I'm talking to some girls, I wasn't a Christian or anything like that, just hanging out, trying to be cool, and next thing I know, this guy starts yelling across the lunchroom, Kyle's this, Kyle's that, things I won't say today in church, and he starts just yelling all these things about me, and it felt like all the eyes of the lunchroom turned and were looking at me like, what are you going to do about it? Well, this guy's twice my size, he's a few years older, and so I'm trying to figure out what to do as this storm just came out of nowhere. I didn't even know it was gonna happen. Came out of nowhere, and I'm trying to figure out what to do in the middle. Do I, do I go try to fight this guy? Is getting beat up in front of the school better than just letting this guy uh, humiliate me? What, what do I do? How do I respond? And in that moment of me just pitting out, sweating, palm sweaty, just freaking out a little bit as the storm had just came upon my life. All of a sudden, I hear from the other side of the room, shut your mouth. And I look over, and it's my buddy, Tell Wood. And he walks up beside me. Now, something you need to know about Tell is, Tell was the toughest kid in school. Tell never lost a fight. Even when he was a freshman, seniors didn't give him a hard time because he was just a tough kid. He never lost a fight. And he walks up beside me and he stands right in front of me and he says, you got something to say? And I just want you to know when he said that, I was kind of behind him and I just started puffing my chest out, looking all tough. And the kid literally looked at Tell and he just sat down and went back to eating his lunch and he never said another word to me again. But as Tell walked up, as he stood beside me, man, it, my posture changed. 
my confidence changed. Because of who stood beside me, it changed my perspective. And when we realize that God stands beside us in the middle of the storm, it changes our confidence. It changes our posture. It changes our perspective. And we have the faith and the courage not to run from the storms in our lives, but instead to run through them. How many of us know it's about who stands beside us in the middle of a storm? You know, there's another story in the Bible in the New Testament when uh, the disciples and Jesus are in a boat and are on the Sea of Galilee. And all of a sudden, this storm comes out of nowhere. And so again, the wind starts picking up. The waves start crashing into the boat. The disciples start freaking out. And they look over at Jesus. And Jesus is sleeping. And so they go over to Jesus and they wake him up in the middle of the storm and they say, Jesus, don't you care what I'm going through? Don't you care what we're all facing? I wonder how many of us have ever said that to God. God, don't you care what I'm going through? Don't you care what I'm dealing with? Don't you care how I'm feeling in this moment? Don't you know how, don't you care how discouraged I am, how defeated I feel, how tired I am, how worn out and exhausted? Don't you care, Jesus? Jesus stands up and yells out to the storm, and yells out to the waves, and yells out to the wind, be still. And in that moment, everything gets calm. And then he looks at the disciples And he asked them a a profound question. He says, how long will you be afraid? How long will you let fear continue to drive and dictate your heart and your life? Why don't you have faith in me? I wonder how many of us today just need to, to be reminded, just need God to say, be still. Be still and know that I'm God. Be still and know that I'm in control. Be still and know that I have the answers to your problems. Be still and know that I'm the one that command the wind and the waves and the storms in your life. Be still and know that I'm God. You see, in this moment, Jesus is teaching the disciples this lesson. And I think he's teaching all of us this same lesson. If you're taking notes, you can write it down. And that is that peace is not the absence of a storm, Peace is found in the presence of Jesus. And peace isn't the absence of a storm. Peace is found in his presence. That's what makes worship so powerful. Digging into his word. That's what makes prayer so powerful. I gotta get into his presence. I need him to remind me to be still heart and know that he's God. Know that he's bigger. Know that he's stronger. Know that he's able, that I'm good. It doesn't matter how how bad the wind gets. It doesn't matter how big the waves seem in this storm that I find myself in. My God's greater. My God's bigger. And I'm reassured to be still and know that he's king as I'm in his presence. How many of us know the storms of life, they might catch us off guard, but they don't catch God off guard. And that real peace isn't found in a trouble-free life. That following Jesus doesn't mean that we're not going to have any troubles or problems or issues. In fact, Jesus said this in John chapter 16, verse 33, not in your notes, but he said, we will have trouble in this world, but take heart for I've overcome it. Take heart for I've overcome the world. You see, real peace isn't found in the absence of a storm. Real peace is found in the presence of Jesus. What we're hearing and learning from the scriptures today that we're never gonna let the presence of a storm cause us to doubt the presence of our God. That as we get into his presence, as we're reminded that he stands beside us no matter what storm we're in. We're not alone in this storm. God gives us the courage, he gives us the confidence, and he gives us the faith not to run from the storms that we face, but instead to run through them. Let's continue studying this story together. Acts 27, verse 23 and 24. It says, last night an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. In other words, you can't go down with this storm, Paul. There's more for you to do. I wonder who needs to hear that today. There's more for you. There's more in you. 
There's, there's more in you than you even know. There's more faith in you. There's more strength in you. You're stronger than you think you are. There's more for you to do. There's more people for you to impact. There's more lives for you to touch. There's more. You're not going down with this storm. This ship might go down, but this storm will not take you out. There's more God wants to do in your life. There's more God wants to do in your heart. There's more God wants to do through you to impact the world around you. Which leads me to my third thought today, and that is the third thing I want us to remember whenever we find ourselves in the middle of a storm is number three, is that God will use what you learn in this storm to help someone else through theirs. God will use what we learn in this storm that we're facing to help somebody else through their storms. Let me me say it like this. There's purpose in the storm. That God wastes nothing. God doesn't waste your past. God doesn't waste your problems. God doesn't waste your struggles. And he doesn't waste your storms. That he has this innate ability to bring purpose out of everything. He brings purpose out of your mistakes. He brings purpose out of your pain. He brings purpose out of your past. There's purpose in this storm. God wants to do a greater work in us so that he can do a greater work through us. He'll use the lessons that you're learning in this storm to help somebody else through theirs. Maybe maybe you've survived cancer. And now you can come alongside somebody else who's struggling to have the faith in their diagnosis. You know, there's there's a lady in our church that's become a dear friend. She was diagnosed with brain cancer. and was given five months to live. That was seven years ago. And the lessons she's learned about the goodness of God. What God's done in her heart, in her life. She's been able to inspire. She's been able to help. She's been able to bring hope. She's been able to stir somebody else's faith who's going through the same thing. That God is using the lessons that she's learning in this storm to help somebody else through theirs. Maybe, maybe you've overcome unfaithfulness in your marriage. God has done a work in you, allowed you to forgive, maybe allowed you to forgive yourself, helped you love, and he's redeemed, and he's restored your marriage and given you a relationship you never, at one time in the storm, you never thought possible, but God. And now you can bring hope to a couple who thinks they can't make it through whatever storm they're facing. You can stir their faith and support them and come alongside them. You can use the lessons God taught you to help somebody else through the storms they're facing. Or maybe you've been sober for a couple years now. God's done a work in you. That he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Now you can reach down to somebody else who's struggling in their addiction, who's struggling in their shame, who's struggling in their guilt, who's struggling in their hopelessness, and you can reach down and say, if God did it for me, he can do it for you. Come on, I'm with you. Come on, I'm with you. I'm going to pick you back up. Attach your faith to my faith. I've learned some lessons in that storm. Come on, they're going to help you overcome the storm in your life. God will use the lessons we learn to help others through their storms. And suddenly, all of a sudden, we start talking about the goodness of God. We start sharing the goodness of God with the people and the world around us, that God will never leave us in the middle of a storm. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. As we get this greater perspective and this realization of the goodness of God in our lives, man, something happens on the inside of us. It takes our faith to a whole nother level. And we realize and we know and we believe that God is good in the storm. God's good out of the storm. That's, that kind of faith is a faith that will move us forward. That I'll praise you in the storm. God, I'll praise you out of the storm. I'll praise you when everything's going right in my life. And I will praise you when everything seems to be going wrong. That's a faith that will move us forward. I'm going to close just a couple scriptures. Continue on in the story, Acts 27, verse 25. Paul 
once again. He says the same line again. So keep up your courage, men. Keep your courage up. For I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. How many of us know we can't control our situation? We can't, we can't control when the storm starts, how bad it gets, or even how long it lasts in our lives. I can't control what other people do, what other people think, what other people say, but I can choose who, who I can't control who I choose to listen to. I can control what I choose to say in the storm, and I can control where I put my faith. Paul says to them, keep up your courage. I have faith in God in verse 26. I love this. Keep up your courage. Have faith in God. But we're going to crash. But this ship's going down. It's not going to be easy. We're going to shipwreck on some other island, some other place. This thing's going down. He'll never leave us, nor forsake us. He stands beside me in the storm. He's with us no matter how bad it gets. I'm not alone. In other words, what Paul is saying, God, I'll serve you. If this ship wrecks, I'm gonna serve you. I'll serve you in the struggle. I'll serve you in the storm because you're faithful. No matter what's going on around me, I'm still gonna praise my God. No matter what's happening, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm facing, no matter what I'm up against, I'll still serve you. I'll still praise you. I'll still worship you. I'll still follow you, Jesus. That's a faith. That's a faith that will move us forward to run through any storm that comes our way. Maybe you're watching this today. There's some storms going on in your life. Maybe like me, at one point in time, I just tried to handle it on my own. Try to make it happen and try to fight my way through it. Try to figure it out. Until I faced a storm I, I didn't know how to get through. And I realized I needed a savior. I realized I needed a relationship with Jesus. I had no peace. I had no joy. I had no love. I had no purpose. I had no meaning. But Jesus. But Jesus stepped in. He changed me. I had the, I had the faith to pray this prayer. God, here's my life. No matter what happens, no matter what's going on, I was in a jail cell. I still remember that day I remember the metal toilet I remember the cold cell I remember the uncomfortable bed I remember the loneliness I remember the pain I remember the hopelessness I got down on my knees in that jail cell and I said God here's my life I'm done I'm done trying to figure it out I'm done fighting these storms on my own. Here's my life. If you get me out of here, I'll serve you. But if you don't get me out of here, I'll serve you. If the ship wrecks, I'll serve you. In a storm, I'll serve you. And in that moment, God changed my life forever. A few months later, I was released, never to step foot back in a jail cell. He delivered me from drugs and alcohol. Gave me a family, gave me a wife, gave me a life with purpose and meaning and victory and hope. Now I get to use the lessons I learned in those moments to help somebody else through the storms of their lives. Maybe today you need to make that your prayer. I'll serve you, here's my life, God. If that's you, would you just pray this with me? Say, God, thank you for your love that never fails. Thank you that you have a plan for me in the storm, in the struggle, in the issues.
And today, right now, here's my life. Here's my heart. Here's my pain. Here's my past. I give it all to you, God. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to pay the price for my sin. God, forgive me. God, heal me. Change me. Deliver me. Restore me. Redeem me. God, fill me. My life is yours. In Jesus' name. As we continue praying together today, maybe you find yourself in the middle of a storm. And the storm has caused you to start to doubt the presence of your God. But not anymore. Now today, we're going to pray about everything. We're going to tell God what we need. And we're going to remember all the things He's already done in our lives. And we're never going to let the presence of a storm cause us to doubt the presence of our God. Maybe, maybe there's some, some storms in your life that's caused you to run from them. And God wants to give you a faith that moves you forward and gives you the courage to run through it. Maybe you've been through some storms and you've learned some things. God's calling you to help somebody else through theirs. Let me pray for us today. God, thank you. Thank you for a faith that moves us forward. Thank you that you bring hope, you bring victory, you bring freedom, you bring perspective. God, and right now, the storms that we're facing in our lives, the storms we're facing as a country, as a nation, God, I pray we would never let the presence of a storm cause us to doubt the presence of our King. God, I pray right now you, you would fill us with the faith, that you'd fill us with the courage, God, not to run from our storms, but instead to run through them. That we would use the lessons you're teaching us, the lessons that we're learning to help somebody else through their storms. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you're doing. We honor you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, come on, Rock City Church. What a powerful time in God's presence. Let's worship Him today. Let's honor the King. Come on.
Let faith rise up, oh heart, believe Let faith rise up in me right now Let faith rise up, oh heart, believe Let faith rise up in me Let faith rise up